So I was talking to my nephew a few weeks ago who is a freshman in college studying business. And I said, leverage my network and me for opportunities if you need any help. He made a super astute observation and he said, hmm, I do need to be more confident in my networking skills. And if that's you too, let's talk about how we can approach networking so it's not scary, daunting, or just overwhelming. What's going on everyone, Markel here, and welcome back to my channel where we talk about career, mindset, and tech. Today I wanna to talk about networking and being more confident when we network. So I think that networking is often seen as this very parasitic thing of I'm just trying to use somebody for my next opportunity or I don't really care about this person, but I'm just going to be nice to them in order to get something that I want. And yeah, you could make networking like that, but it doesn't have to be like that. It can be a lot more constructive and just beneficial for both parties. It's something that I struggle with still to this day. And while it may seem like you're inconveniencing someone, you'd be surprised by just the positive results that can come from networking. So what is the definition of networking first? Networking is building relationships for opportunity and insight. What people don't realize is it doesn't have to be one way. You can also provide to your network. So one of the major benefits that I've been able to find when it comes to networking is just being able to find solidarity being able to find someone who's also struggling and can empathize and sympathize with my struggles where I'm currently at. So if you're a college student in engineering and you keep experiencing struggle after struggle, doesn't it feel a lot better to go through those struggles with a friend or someone else? That's your network. Those are your peers. And leaning on them just for emotional support helps you get through the tough times. So really networking, I don't like the term, but it's about relationship building and a relationship appreciation. And so the building part is expanding it and being able to grow beyond just your immediate, your current immediate circle. And appreciation is what I think most of us don't do a great job at. And that's really cultivating the relationship you currently have and saying, hey, I see where you are. I wanna push you to be the best version of yourself. When I was in college, I had a little mantra that I would tell my closest five friends and it's rooted in the quote, you're the average of the five closest people around you. And so I like to say I surrounded myself with dope engineering students. And so I always said, hey, if you guys are my circle, we're a spiral going up. And essentially the idea is we continue to inspire one another to reach new heights. And I think that's really valuable when it comes to network appreciation. It's just being able to say, I have people that are close to me and I appreciate them and I wanna help them be the best version of themselves. That solidarity is still important even outside of school. In the workplace, it was just really comforting to know that I had peers that I could lean on if I was struggling with a problem. And I would also be able to provide support to them if they were going through a tough challenge. And again, it was always mutual and it wasn't contrived. And I think that's the big thing. It has to be authentic, not contrived. So now that we understand a little bit more about what networking is, what are some ways or mechanisms that we can do a better job to be more confident in networking? The first thing I would say is do not self-reject. I think that so many times we have opportunities to be able to build a relationship or cultivate an existing relationship, but we psych ourselves out and we don't take the action that it actually requires to get to that next step. So that could mean you have an opportunity to network with a recruiter, but you don't feel like you have the skills necessary to get an opportunity, so you just won't waste your time talking to that recruiter. Yeah, I get the logic, but it's still flawed. You want to get closer and just because you can't hit a home run by getting that opportunity at this exact moment doesn't mean it's not a valuable person to talk to. So in a situation like that, don't self-reject. You want to be able to approach that recruiter, ask for a tip, ask for some insight. It doesn't always have to be aiming for a home run. You can get a base hit and learn a couple tricks, a couple tips in order to help your development to get to that opportunity and really play the long game. There's a pretty famous expression I'm sure you heard of. You miss 100% of the shots that you don't take. Wayne Gretzky, Michael Scott. And I love that quote from The Office and I love that I first discovered it on The Office, but I think it's so true. And if I could add anything to that quote, I would say, and you're not gonna shoot 100% and that's okay too. And essentially it's this notion of, I like to use a baseball batting average versus like a free throw shooting average. So in baseball, 
a batting average of 300, which is really 30%, is considered really good for being able to get on base. But in basketball, a shooting percentage above 90% from the free throw line is considered great. And I think we compare a basketball free throw shooting percentage with our careers and how we develop, when in reality, it's closer to a batting average. And if anything, it's probably even worse than that. And the other piece to that is kind of a worthiness to be able to even shoot your shot. And one thing I want to really make clear is you deserve to shoot your shot just as much as anyone else. Let me say that one again. You deserve to shoot your shot just as much as anyone else. Self-advocate, do not self-reject. Yeah, you may not be as qualified on paper. Your qualifications don't always match up like one-to-one -one with someone else. And it's because there's a story behind your experiences and there's a story behind what you've done and where you're trying to go. And you could actually be a better fit than you realize. Again, just because both candidates have a MATLAB experience or both candidates have Python experience or both candidates have exposure to the automotive industry, that's not a, enough to be able to make a comparison and decision, right? There's so much more nuance to an individual than being able to just like glean from their resume. So of course your resume should be top notch, should be really well detailed, but that's not the only thing that they're gonna look at. And you really hope that that resume or that first point of contact inspires them to wanna talk to you further. The second thing is people love helping people trying to help themselves. Think about it. If you see somebody struggling to do something and you have what it takes to help them out and you know it's not really out of your way, you're probably gonna help them out. Recently, a student reached out to me and said, hey, I'm trying to apply to over a hundred internship opportunities for this summer and this fall, but I really need to nail down my resume. Do you have a template or something that I can use to better present myself and my experiences? Yeah. The fact that you're trying to do something, I don't want to be the person to inhibit it first off. And moreover, I would love to be the person to say like, I was able to help this person achieve something that they were working really hard to achieve. That's a really rewarding feeling. Sometimes we think that networking is very transactional and it could be, but that transaction could still be really valuable for both parties. So for her, she was looking for resume templates and understanding of how to better talk about her experiences. And for me, I wanted to help her. I wanted to help people. I wanna help people who are trying to develop in their career, develop and get into dope tech roles. So. She actually helped me because that's my goal. And so since people love helping people, the hard thing is finding a way to help that person. I've had a lot of students reach out to me and ask me really big favors, like, can you give me a referral or can I get a job for this summer? And I would love to just say yes and yes to both of those questions, but it's not that simple. What students and many people in their early career kind of miss out on is asking smaller requests and asking for insights and asking for little nudges and asking for little things to get them inch by inch closer instead of trying to get a home run, just trying to get on base and just inch your way to that next opportunity. So the last thing I wanna mention are a few other reasons why you should consider networking or up your networking game if you haven't already. The first one is referrals are the number one way to get a job. And that's just like a probability thing. Everyone can apply online. A lot of people can go to a career fair or conference, but not a lot of people can obtain a referral, which you can think of like a fast pass at Disney World where you're able to skip the line and get straight in front of the recruiter's face or straight in front of the hiring manager's face with your resume where they're more likely to say, yeah, you know what? I will interview this person. And there's a couple of reasons for that. Number one, you're actually mapped and matched with an opportunity when someone gives you a referral. It's like, hey, I think that this person would be great plus for this role. So those two pieces are really strong. And if they have a strong reputation, what they say can actually go a pretty long way. And the second reason why I say you should network more is to just increase your learning overall. And I find it so much more effective to talk to an expert in a space and get direction from them on what I should be learning and where I should be learning it from, 
than trying to scavenge through the internet and try to learn it, right? Like I'm not gonna just go online and try to learn about Coinbase or NFTs or cryptocurrency whatsoever. I'm gonna go to somebody who knows the space and say, so what's going on? Okay, can you send me some links so I can learn about it? And then I go from there and then I circle back and I can ask you know, more pointed questions. People are more accessible than you realize. The key though, is being able to approach them in a genuine and authentic way. And if they aren't down to connect, don't take it personal. Just move on to the next person who you'd like to learn from. So my challenge to you is this, look at your network. Think about how you can help those people in your immediate circle. Do you know someone and can you be a bridge to connect them to their next opportunity? Or do you know a nugget of knowledge that would actually go a long way in helping them? If so, share it, help them out, provide that intro and do it without expecting anything in return. Ask yourself, what am I looking to get? What opportunity am I trying to obtain? And then once you understand that, tell your immediate circle and tell your network of peers, mentors, or maybe even professors, because if the opportunity presents itself, maybe they can actually be that bridge to connect you. Unselfishly, of course. So if you found this video useful, let me know in the comments. And if you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.